Today I am extremely excited and very pleased to introduce you to the brand new Nikon Z9. Inside we've got a full frame CMOS stacked 45.7 megapixel sensor. We're going to see incredibly quick continuous frame rate shooting for stills up to 120 frames per second, nine types of simultaneous subject detection autofocus, and 8K 60p in camera raw recording for video, which is just incredible. Now, that sensor does produce big images, there's no doubting that, but Nikon have accounted for that by putting in a really nice, powerful processor, the X Speed 7. That will help with things like your image processing, it will help with the autofocus systems, making sure this has fantastic performance at high ISOs, and also the image buffer. Now, the buffer on this means you can shoot at a continuous frame rate of 20 frames per second with autofocus and auto exposure, and they reckon it's a thousand plus full resolution shots before your buffer fills up, as long as you're using a good enough card. Now, in the side here, we have a locking door, and underneath you will see two CF Express Type B card slots. Now, they are backwards compatible with XQD, so if you have built up a little stash of XQD cards, no problem at all, but you are gonna be wanted to run some really, really good CF Express Type B cards in this to make use of all these fantastic features that I'm telling you about. Now, just like other cameras that we've seen from other manufacturers recently, Nikon are employing a sensor shield. Basically, when you turn the camera off and you take your lens off, a shield comes down over that sensor to protect from unwanted dust and dirt going straight onto it. It just gives an extra level of protection. And with any camera like this, there is always the possibility that you'll get a few dust spots, but it just really limits that and again, makes this a hardy camera for harsh environments. This is a magnesium alloy body, which is lightweight and extremely robust. And it is made to help with heat dissipation, be ultra strong in case you drop the camera and protect from any electromagnetic fields that are coming into contact with the camera. Also, we have huge amounts of weather sealing of the body itself. And of course, if you are pairing it with those Z mount lenses, it continues that incredible weather sealing. Now, the big news for me when it comes to this camera is that Nikon have actually stated this has better sealing, better robustness, which is the word I keep using for that reason. Nikon have said that this is better than the D6, which is a huge deal. The D6 is their flagship camera for wildlife and sports and press. And to say that the new Z9 is meant to be hardier than that, that's a massive, massive tick for this camera. Most cameras of this type house like a 20 to 25 megapixel sensor inside. And because of that, they're often not favored for things like landscape and weddings and portraiture. You can still take amazing photos, but they're often not favored. Now with this having 45.7 megapixels, it means it's completely versatile to pretty much any photography that you want to be getting. Does that mean it's the right camera for everyone? Absolutely not. It is a large camera. It's reasonably heavy if you compare it to some of the sort of small mirrorless cameras. And it's quite expensive. But if you need what this camera is offering, you're not limited. If you are a wildlife photographer, yes, your file sizes are gonna be bigger than if you're using something like a D6. But this, you know, you can adjust it in the menu system if you'd like to, or you can actually crop and still have an image that's big enough to print a zero or put on a billboard somewhere if you're a competition winner. And this body is smaller than the D6 as well, 20%. Now that doesn't mean it feels miniature in the hand. It's got a massive grip, really nice form factor. And all of the button placement is very similar to what we see in D5, D6. So if you're coming from those models, you're not gonna have a lot to learn, but it is 20% smaller it is lighter and it's also cheaper. Although the buttons and dials are very similar to what we've seen before, that doesn't mean there aren't any new additions. We have an AF mode select button, which means when you're in the viewfinder, you can cycle through your AF mode just to make it easier to find them. Also, you can light up your buttons with just using the on off switch. You just give it a little switch like that 
And you've got lit up buttons. The dial up here is lit, all these back ones are lit, and to turn it off, you just do that again. So if you're shooting at night time or in a darkened environment, it's enough for you to see exactly what you're doing and you don't have to use like a rubbish head torch or something. So I've come outside to have a play with the Z9 now. And I've just had it confirmed. We've got a man here from Nikon who's behind the camera, who's answering any questions that we have because we've only had a small presentation on this camera so far. So by the time you see this video, there will be way more info about exactly what this can do. Now, one of my questions was the 120 frame per second continuous frame rate for stills. What resolution are we getting realistically? Because we know it's not gonna be raw. Now they've just confirmed that that will be an 11.3 megapixel image so it's not full res or anything like that i don't think we'd expect it 120 frames per second but it will allow us if there is a moment of action to capture just an incredible amount of frames in that time it does feel like i'm shooting with a dslr but i'm getting all those positives of a mirrorless i i like that feedback straight away you know from the viewfinder and from the screen so that i know what i'm shooting and when i shoot weddings i particularly like that when i'm out in the field as well i i find it useful i know a lot of people prefer an optical viewfinder but nikon have sort of negated the problem with the z9 the viewfinder has 3000 nits of brightness there is absolutely no lag at all and when you shoot it's no blackout so it is basically the closest you're gonna get to having an optical viewfinder so i think if you're ever gonna if that was ever your sticking point to stay with a dslr i think if you're ever gonna move this is probably the camera that's gonna make you do it it is now dark um, we are going to test the ISO performance now. So this can shoot ISO 64 to 25,600, or that is expandable down to 32 and up to 102,400. Doubt anyone's going to use it there, but it's available if you need it. Now we've got some literally open fields with not much going on. So I'm going to do a test here first, just to have a look at the ISO performance on a very sort of flat level atmosphere. And then I'm going to walk down into the village where we've got some like lamp lights, car lights, that sort of thing, and try it there too, to see how it performs with a bit more dynamic range. This is a real test of the dynamic range today. The contrast is huge and it looks lovely. And if you get the shot right, it looks beautiful. But so far, looking at these waves where you've got these intense shadows, the white spray, the sun is directly in front of us. So it's from behind the waves. It's very harsh shooting conditions. And obviously knowing what, oh my goodness, there's a wasp. It was crawling up my thumb. <laughs> but aside from the wasp, the D6 has obviously got incredible image quality you know, and um, I'm seeing, you know, this, I say the same quality, but what I mean is comparatively the same quality because obviously this is a 45.7 megapixel sensor. So you've got a lot more detail in there. When I'm zooming in on these waves, you can see each individual bit of spray and it is sharp and lovely. So I'm gonna probably move, to be honest. I like wasps, but uh, that one. Sean is not a fan of wasps. I've now set up the Z9 with an Atomos Ninja 5. Is that what it's called or V? Now I'm gonna do a little AF test in this quite nice light, but with the Atomos attached so you can see exactly what the camera is doing. So we're gonna take some continuous shots. As Sean comes towards me, I've set the autofocus onto the 3D tracking mode. And then I've got the monitor so that you can see that it's holding his eye in autofocus the whole time. So let's give it a go. going through some of those images I've shot of Sean and 
I'm pretty impressed with how the autofocus worked through that. You'll be able to see on the Atomos footage that the eye autofocus just stayed with him throughout. Even when he's darting about here and there, it worked perfectly. And not only was it working with him running towards me, which is a hard enough thing to do anyway, I've got the 3D tracking on, remember, so that does work, but I was also zooming in and out on that new 100 to 400 as well. And it was tracking him all the way through that really super fast, responsive. So that means if you're shooting sports and something's happening and you want to reframe your shot, you can easily do that. And you don't even have to take your finger off the shutter. You can just change your zoom, reframe your shot, continue shooting throughout. And this camera is going to continue getting the shots for you. With a camera of this type, you need an effective autofocus system. Now I've spoken about the fact that it's been very quick, very precise, which it has been, but let me tell you a bit about the tech that's involved. Now, the autofocus algorithm in this is all new and it allows for multiple things to be detected in a scene at the same time. The Z9 can detect people, faces, bodies, and eyes. It can detect animal and it can detect bodies and eyes and it can detect vehicles, cars, motorbikes, planes and trains, which I think is fantastic. It basically makes this an incredibly versatile camera no matter what you're shooting, which is kind of a vibe that we're seeing throughout this whole review in every spec that this camera seems to have. Now this has 473 autofocus points and it's got 10 selectable AF area modes. Now there is a new button on here, just here, where you can easily select what type of autofocus you want to be working with. You can do that through the viewfinder as well. So it just makes life a lot easier whether you're shooting with the screen or the viewfinder at the time. Now, as I've said, the autofocus has been incredibly precise and all these autofocus modes and things that you can program are all available for video as well. So whether you're shooting video or you're shooting stills, this has an autofocus system that I think will be right for you. Now, the other thing that they have done with the Z9 is to have currently, at the time of filming, the world's fastest sensor scanning. So basically, the information comes into the sensor and it goes all the way down the sensor and it starts again. And that's how the information gets out of the sensor. And that is why you get rolling shutter. Now, for stills, a very obvious one is when someone shoots a golf club. If someone's teeing off and they have their golf club moved down, sometimes the golf club can look bendy and that is because of rolling shutter. Now with this camera, you're not gonna experience this. With the world's fastest sensor scan rate off of this full frame sensor, it allows you to get the best possible readout speeds. Now that is great for stills, fantastic, but it is gonna be very noticeable in video. And actually the video spec of this is crazy impressive all round. So I'm gonna now hand this to Sean, who's behind the camera today. He's gonna to get some demo footage and tell you a little bit about what this can do. Hello, I'm Sean and I did some video with the Nikon Z9 and I've got to say, I really liked it. I would never shot on a Nikon mirrorless system before for photo or video. Literally never really touched one apart from the Nikon Z6 when that first came out. However, with the Nikon Z9, I did manage to get a reasonable amount of time with it to develop an opinion on how it worked and to actually feel like I shot some stuff that I was happy to shoot. Try these different video resolutions to see how they worked, to try out the slow motion that this camera offers, and also just to vibe how the camera feels to use as a video camera. Now it is 10-bit 422 as well, and we have some interesting like file formats um, that it can record in. Um, initially like internal Apple ProRes 422HQ, which is outstanding. Having that as an internal recording file format just gives you lots of information whilst also keeping those like file sizes a little bit more compressed so that you're not just wasting memory constantly. There is also going to be um, raw internal video recording, but that's going to be in a firmware update that's going to come in spring of 2022. So, you know, internal though, right? Like that, that's, that's, that's a brilliant, that's brilliant. And inclusive of those two, you also have MP4 and .mov. So you do also have those going for you if you want to stick to something a little bit more familiar. If you're used to using like MP4 for the internet or .mov for your edits, that will then 
go onto the internet and do internet-y things. In terms of your resolution sizes, of course you've got full HD and you've got 4K UHD and then you've got 8K, which is also UHD. It's all just down to the aspect ratio. So it'll match the aspect ratio of 4K UHD, but yes, you essentially have 8K video, internal recording straight away up to 30p. Um, 4K, you can go up to 120p, so that's good. It's not like an SNF mode or an SNQ mode either, but with the Nikon Z9, you have 120p 4K UHD video with audio. So you know like when you're shooting on uh, just your standard mirrorless camera, a lot of mirrorless cameras these days can at least do full HD 50p. Like the 50p, you have audio with that as well. So if you wanted to play it in real time with audio, say like someone's, um, someone delivers like a really good piece of audio for you, like says something that's quite poignant for the purpose of your video or your documentary or whatever kind of event you're shooting, then that's really good. You've got that there. You can play that back in real time in your video and it will work really well. Well, the Nikon Z9 offers you that, but at 120p. So you've got your audio, you don't have to slow it down, but you have the creative freedom to slow it down uh, like a times four slow motion if you wanted to. 8K, however, it only plays in real time, so you're not getting any slow motion with that 8K, but you, you are getting 8K which um, for anyone who likes to use 4K to basically treat it as like two camera angles, well, 8K is essentially giving you, I guess, two extra camera angles if you're timesing 4K by two, you know, four times two is eight, you know, if that's how it works. It just gives you a lot more bang for buck per shot, I would say. Coming to the body of the camera itself, I found that the, the shape, the size, the weight of the camera was really good. It wasn't too heavy, but at the same time, it wasn't too light. So that would obviously help with my stabilization when going handheld and everything. Um, it also just made you feel good while using it because you feel like you're using like an absolute beast of a camera. Like it just feels good to use. But yeah, overall, I just loved working with the Z9. I found it very nice to use. It was fun to use. Having the 120p just mean I could be creative. I could be free. Having the 4K gave me the flexibility. And I just feel like um, whether it was because we had good light on the day or whatever, I found that some of the colors that we got through from that shoot were, were wonderful. It actually made me love this camera and I would love to say like shoot a short film with it or like a little commercial piece or something, something a little bit more creative just to see what could come from it with using like professional lighting, professional, more professional gear in tow with it and everything. I think that'll be a really interesting test for this camera in the future. I'm sure there'll be people out there online doing those sorts of tests. So I'll be, look, I'll be looking forward to basically seeing those. And that's really all I have to say on the video front for the Nikon Z9. It's been a pleasure to work with. Now, handing back over to Amy. Apparently I've got to give this camera back, which is making me very sad because someone's just started flying a kite and I've really enjoyed reviewing it. Now I have spoken to Nikon and they are going to let me review this again soon, which I'm very, very happy about. And the 100-400, by the way, that's also been released today, fantastic. So make sure to check out our little mini review on that, which again, we will be getting back to do some more stuff with. Now, if you'd like to ask some questions about the new Z9, make sure to leave them in the comments. We'll try our best to get back to you with all of the info we currently have on the camera. Now, at the time of filming, we've only had a very short presentation. So hopefully by the time this is released, we'll know a bit more about it. You can also check out our store page, which I'll put a link in the description to, and that will have loads of information and you can even place a cheeky pre-order if this has tickled your fancy. For professionals, I think this is a standout piece of kit. It is incredible and I can't wait to get my hands back on it. For now, a massive thank you for watching and I hope you join me again soon for some more videos from Wex Photo Video.